Um, so here's an example here. Or we've logged into the Maximal work order system that we all use here at Public Works. Um, this, and we're seeing here a Maximo uh, Manager Start Center that gives us a number of different things, uh, complaints that we have to deal with, uh, call back, so issues that have been uh, called in by the residents and homeowners, and the manager is going to be uh, looking at following those things up. And the manager also has a profile of all the different kinds of work that is on deck for him, and uh, a profile of all the different kinds of things um, we, uh, they have yet to do in terms of statuses. Um, the example I'm going to go through now is um, a homeowner uh, calling in to uh, our customer service uh, desk and uh, they would do that by launching a, uh, a service request and uh, initiating a brand new service request. So in this uh, scenario here we have the um, homeowner calls us in and that homeowner lives at 115 uh, Southwood. Um, system validates that address automatically for us and uh, I'm going to say it's Mr. Smith and uh, the phone number is um, some phone number uh, and we classify all these calls. So the customer here in this case or the homeowner is um, uh, talking about a sidewalk issue. We classify every complaint and issue that comes into us and um, we have different ways of classifying things through the system and in this case it's a public complaint, uh, it's a sidewalk issue, and we drill down to the appropriate code, and in this case it'll be sidewalk condition complaint. Um, the system tells us uh, some uh, prompts uh, the person taking the call, some information in the background to try to solicit information from the, uh, the homeowner about the nature of the issue and, and uh, some basic background information, all related to our classification or, or complaint code as we know it. Uh, so in this case here, Mr. Smith is talking about a, um, uh, a sidewalk issue in front of his home. There's maybe a crack um, that uh, his kids have tripped over. He's gone on walks and he's seen this crack here all spring and he'd like to uh, have someone deal, deal with it. So the person at the other end taking the call can put that information into the system. Mr. Smith um, has uh, an issue about a sidewalk crack in front of home and would like it fixed. All issues in every call that we get from our um, from homeowners and customers and from the public at large, everything goes through this system as a uh, service request and so they all get logged and the system automatically redirects those calls to um, the appropriate individuals and through workflow and uh, defined response plans. So we have a very consistent way of handling all issues uh, in the system. So we're going to save this request now and the system does something smart. Uh, what it does, it goes back and it looks at the history of this location as well as it looks at any issue in the neighborhood. So it, it looks at things in about a hundred meter radius and says what's going on in this area. In this case, we see that um, at 115, there's nothing that, that's, there's no previous record of a history at 115 uh, Southwood, but we do see that uh, 109, his uh, neighbor, Mr. Smith's neighbor, has uh, a number of issues. There's been a driveway issue that's been, that's new, that's come in, and we also see that there's a, a sidewalk defect that's been identified as well, and a defect level three for us is a, a fairly serious issue. So at this point, we can say, uh, Mr. Smith, uh, thank you very much. We do know that there's, a, there's a, a, a serious issue on the sidewalks at 109. Is that your neighbor's? And uh, Mr. Smith would say, why, yes, it is. In fact, the crack is probably just over on the neighbor's side, maybe not in front of my home. So in this case here, we can uh, explain to the, the, um, the homeowner, says, uh, you know, that's great. We have already identified this issue. We have uh, a student that goes out through the summers and identifies all the issues uh, with the sidewalks um, using a bike and the latest GPS and GIS technologies and that's how we know that there's already a sidewalk issue in front of his home and uh, that it was identified in this case in August and we can connect his complaint to this and we can make sure that uh, we either have someone follow up with them on the schedule of when it's going to be fixed um, and uh, follow through that way. So we can refer this request to the manager. We're not going to generate a new work order for this manager because we already know the manager knows of this issue and we don't want to create a duplicate uh, work order. Um, so we can do this this way. The system has recorded the call. And if we wanted to, we can uh, go over to the related defect uh, issue that's been already identified by our student. 
and we can then see that the uh, the job ticket or in, is the terminology we use for a work order in the in the in the Maximo systems, and we see that this defect is already assigned to Mr. Antonio. Uh, it's already assigned to a contract to be done, and the target start date is is September 6th. So this is information that we have on hand, and we can communicate that directly to Mr. Smith. Uh, without having to contact any of our management staff and uh, be able to give Mr. Smith a good sense that uh, we are actually on top of things and we are dealing with this things as soon as we can possibly do. And we are also using some of the latest uh, technologies and green methods by having students use bicycles, um, using GPS and GIS, all integrated with our work management systems that uh, make it uh, the most effective uh, really we can. Well, thank you for the demo, Mike. That You're was welcome. very interesting. What I'd like to do now is open up the lines, so the phones will open momentarily. On the call with me will be Mike Hauser uh, from the City of Cambridge, as well as uh, Mike Marcinet from IBM. And we'll be here to talk over the next few minutes about the solution that's been implemented here, some of the experience IBM has from a Smarter Planet initiative uh, here in the city of Cambridge as well as globally. And then from my standpoint, some of the things that our research is showing us around how public sector is evolving and using technology on a daily basis. Thank you and we'll start the calls now.